The January 2023 payroll report, as you know, was big. I mean, really big. How big was it? Well, it was much bigger than the plus 517,000 number that the BLS spit out of its various surveys and calculations. It was so big that it reignited this ultra hawkish position from many FOMC members who nowadays are running around talking about, oh, more 50 basis point rate hike, maybe 75. We need to get federal funds rate up into double digits. Together with the unemployment rate for January, then the CPI that was allegedly hotter than it was should have been, um, retail sales that was big in January. Now we've got this no landing scenario for the economy where the economy it doesn't even need a soft landing. It's just going to continue right on as if nothing more than a tiny little slowdown at the end of last year. And underneath all of that, this robust labor market that is pictured by these labor market data that the government puts together and how they're interpreted by economists, central bankers in the mainstream as the entire economic case. And it sounds like it should be that way, right? Because recession is synonymous with layoffs, or at least it seems to be. We can't have a we can't have a recession without layoffs, can we? But in the same way that all thumbs are fingers, but all not all fingers are thumbs. Not all recessions are always about layoffs. Yes, the two go together, but not always in a direct one-to-one -one relationship. And relying on the labor market and especially the mainstream data about the labor market is one of history's, economic history's most dependable mistakes. One that observers, policymakers, economists, the media, the mainstream commit every time we go through this. So what we're going to do today is we're going to go back through history and I'm going to give you some examples about how payrolls actually behave during recession, which is not what you might think, and as well as what the markets are saying about the big payroll report and how that has changed either the fundamentals or what the Federal Reserve is going to do in response to it. And those two things don't have to be the same thing at all. But first, I'm Jeff. This is Eurodollar University. Thank you very much for joining me. If you're interested, Eurodollar University has memberships where you get exclusive content, where we go over the monetary fundamentals, how money actually works, what it really looks like. I just did a basics video where we talked about how money in the modern day looks more like a telecommunications network than anything you would associate with currency. I also have research subscriptions, a daily briefing in partnership at Markets Insider Pro, where we go over the day's big macro news, as well as what's moving the important markets, the curves and whatnot, and a deep dive analysis, a daily deep dive analysis at Eurodollar University, where we do what the name says. We dive deep into all of these topics, the implications, what it means, what it means for how we got here and where we think we are all going, all the information available for you at eurodollar.university. So let's start our review by talking about where the markets are right now. After all of this rush of no landing data, starting with the payroll report, unemployment rate, CPI, retail sale, and then yesterday, we got the ISM services, which was above 50, a big jump from where it had been in the, in the middle 40s, perhaps suggesting the same thing, that the economy is holding up really well despite what really looked to be serious negatives. And that's that's the common theme here. And every, keep that in mind as we go through the re review, that the common theme is always, wow, the economy seems to be holding up really well despite all of these monstrous economic pressures coming right at all of it. And then it doesn't. So the market, let's, let's talk about the market. Um, the three-month, two-year spread on the U.S. Treasury curve, so nominal three-month T-bill rate, two-year Treasury note rate, that spread has narrowed. It jumped to between minus 50 and minus 60, inverted, heavily inverted in January, consistent with what I think was another decline in the actual economy. Um, it has backed off again to where the inversion is only about 20 basis points. So a little bit more than when we started January, but not as much as it had been at the peak in the middle of last month. The one-year, 10-year spread, however, that one hasn't changed much at all. Despite the big payroll report, despite all the data that followed on with it, what that says is that the entire curve has shifted upward as the market projects more 
rate hikes in the near term future. The Fed is going to continue hiking rates for a little bit while longer, but no change in what happens after the Fed finishes. The Fed says higher for longer, but this spread says no, interest rates are going to go down when uh, relatively soon after whatever point, whatever final point the Federal Reserve gets to. Uh, then you look at some of the forward spreads, which think about interest rates in the future, what the market thinks about interest rates in the future. You compare the, say, the one year forward with the three month nominal T bill. So what three months the rate is today, where the market thinks one year or rates will be one year from now. That spread has almost disappeared. Again, the market saying we don't really know how much farther the Federal, Federal Reserve is going to get with all of this data coming in in just the way the Fed wants it to wants to see it as an economy holding up. Not doesn't want to see it in terms of inflationary potential as the FOMC understand it. But at the, at the same time, you look at some of the longer term forward spreads, like the two year forward to the nominal two year Treasury note yield. That one has come back a little bit over the last couple of weeks, but not really all that much. And is still heavily inverted in a way that we that uh, it showed up in January. So that spread hasn't narrowed all that much. And then you look at the five year forward rate compared to the five year nominal U.S. Treasury. And that one hasn't narrowed at all. So again, the entire curve is shifting upward, but the back spreads or the spreads off the back end continue to be highly depressed. In other words, the market is saying what has changed since the January payroll report came out in early February is only what the Federal Reserve is going to do, not the actual fundamentals in the economy. And you think, well, how can that be? Because the Federal Reserve, don't, don't, don't they base their monetary policy on fundamentals? <laughs> no, no. They base their monetary policy on the labor market data and are never capable, apparently, of learning from making the same mistake over and over and over and over and over again. I could give you a number, I mean, hundreds, literally hundreds of examples here. I'll just, I'll just keep it to a couple because we don't really have time for it. And after you see the first couple, there's really no need to keep going through this because you realize how it's the same error over and over and over again. And before we get to that, I do want to thank my friend Mike in Canada for nudging me in this direction by showing me the graph with the 1974's recession, which we'll get to in a minute. First, let's go back to 2008 because that's the easiest, most recent example. I would talk about 2019. But 2019, we'll never know for certain how that would have played out because of the pandemic interrupted that process. I think it would have presented a good example. But regardless, we don't need to go back to 2019. Let's go back to 2008. I've talked about recently how the NBER, the group of economists who've taken it upon themselves to officially date when recession started. And in 2008, it, was, it wasn't until December of 2008 that they finally said, yeah, this was a recession. And what they said was, uh, Robert Hall, who was chair of the committee who dates these things, these business cycles, that dates the troughs and the peaks, he said, well, up until around September when Lehman failed, he didn't say Lehman, but up until around September, the labor market data didn't look all that bad. This should already sound very familiar. And he wasn't alone. That was the general consensus among policymakers, economists, the media, everybody. Maybe the public knew a little bit better, but the official elite, the institutions, whatever you want to call them, they were all convinced the Federal Reserve had engineered a miracle of sorts. Despite the massive headwinds from the housing bust on the real economy, up until around that time, really it was July, it was actually before then, but you really could tell in the summer of 2008 that the economy was in really bad shape. But here's, let's go back to June of 2008. This is taken from a tr the transcript from the June 2008 meeting. Uh, Jeffrey Lacker, who was the was Atlanta Fed, I think. On the whole, I think the risk of the national economy sinking into a serious recession has receded, and the growth outlook has edged up a bit. I was relieved by the strengthened retail sales in May, as well as the upward revisions for April and March. The ISM indexes have steadied right around 50 over the past four months. And although I feared the labor and although the labor market has been weak, it has not yet shown the accelerating declines as I feared. If you go back into the labor market data, what you see today, according to the BLS, is that in April and May of 2008, 
These establishment surveys shrank by 217,000 in April and 191,000 in May, which were pretty clear recession numbers that you would associate with you know, massive layoffs and recessions. But the original reporting was minus 49 and minus 28. So minus 28 for April and minus 49 for June. That was reported on June 6, 2008, just a couple of weeks before this FOMC meeting that I'm quoting from. So you can see why Mr. Lacker would say, well, you know, this massive housing bust, we had Bear Stearns near on the bank brink of insolvency. We have monstrous uh, financial volatility. The stock market tanked and then came back a little bit. And yet the labor market's only shrinking by a little bit. It seems as if the labor market is holding up and therefore the economy is going to hold up. As Mr. Hall said, it wasn't until later that we finally realized the economy was in rough shape. Policymakers were depending upon not just flawed economic data like the, the establishment survey, which always gets revised, but it's also backward looking because not all recessions look like what the 2008 recession might look like today. Let's go back to 1974, as Mike in Canada uh, suggested. And remember 1974, if you're that old, I'm not, I was born in 1974. But if you remember, in 1973, they had the OPEC embargo hit the economy that was already in rough shape from what the great, great inflation, no, the great inflation did not begin with the oil embargo. The great inflation by then was already almost a decade old. And then along comes this oil embargo, which spikes oil prices. You have this enormous price spike on top of actual generalized, or generalized inflation, the real monetary stuff. And yet, throughout the first half of 1974, it looked like the economy was holding up well, especially when you looked at the labor market data, the establishment survey. Now, I don't have access to the original payroll numbers. So the numbers I'm going to present to you here are the modern estimates that we currently have, but they're a close enough approximation given what the, the FOMC and economists in the media were talking about at the time. I'll give you an example. May 1974, this is taken from the FOMC's memorandum of discussion. They didn't have tr exact transcripts at that time. They just had these uh, sanitized sort of uh, uh, re recaps of what was being talked about. And the man around the discussion for May 1974 said this, data becoming available since the last committee meeting appeared to confirm the expected bottoming out in aggregate economic activity. Non-farm payroll employment rose in April 74 and February and March figures were both revised up substantially. Employment and manufacturing increased in April for the first time in five months, mainly reflecting the recall of auto workers. So what the Federal Reserve was expecting after the oil shock with the great inflation, the economy began to slow down and they thought, well, despite all of these massive headwinds, the labor market in particular seems to be holding up really well. Therefore, not even a soft landing. We're going to recover from here. We have a no landing scenario in 1974. Our biggest concern is continued inflation. Well, that was true. The, the most immediate concern turned out to be not inflation. It turned out to be an absolutely nasty recession. The problem with that recession is NBER's Robert Hall in 2008 was absolutely wrong. As you can see in this recession, payroll, payroll expansion continued up until the end of the recession when it's as if the bottom just completely fell out of the economy and the labor market. So the economy, according to the NBER later on, said the recession began in November 73, even if payrolls continued to expand modestly up until the end of 74, when they just utterly collapsed. Of course, surprising everyone at the Federal Reserve and most people who take their information and interpretation from the Fed. But that was hardly unique either. Let's go forward to the 1980 recession, which is the next recession in history. The 1980 recession was a little bit different in the fact that it was very short, but also exceptionally sharp. And what we see in the 1980 recession is the same thing as 74, if to a in, a in a very condensed fashion. You have payroll expansion. Well, before that, you have the economy slowing down. Again, another oil problem, this time with Iran. Um, oil prices spike. You have more than 15 years. By then you have about 15 years of the great inflation on top of another oil crisis that sapped the economy. And yet 
For the first half of this 1980 short recession, payrolls continued to expand. Policymakers continued to look at the labor market and say, this doesn't look too bad. And then, bam, seemingly out of nowhere, mass layoffs. And so for the final four months of the, the 1980 recession, it was a disaster, even though it looked in the payroll reports, nothing like the first part of that 1980 recession. Let's do one more. Let's go to the next one, the 1981 recession, which prior to 2008 was the worst economic contraction since the Great Depression. What you see is once again, a slowdown preceding the recession, which the labor market, it looks, it looks like a slowdown. It doesn't look any worse. Um, July 1981, Federal Reserve officials, even though that's when the recession began, they're looking at the labor market data and thinking everything appears to be fine. Uh, this is from Robert Forstall, who at the time was the first vice president, again, at the Atlanta Fed. What he said was, what he claimed was, it's pretty clear that the economy in the 6th sixth district is softening, as I suppose it is in most other parts of the country. But it's not entirely clear that it is true throughout every sector of economic activity. For example, total employment and retail sales have been fairly buoyant in the very recent past. Nobody I have talked to expects any kind of major recession at all, and in fact, there is some feeling that business activity is going to pick up in the fourth quarter of 81 and certainly in the first and second quarters of next year being 1982. And he could not have been more wrong. In fact, almost as soon as he said those things, the bottom was already in the process of being yanked and falling out from the economy yet again. The labor market data up until July 1981 had you believing that everything was relatively fine, nothing more than a slowdown. And in fact, the modern estimate for the payroll report in July 1981 was plus 111,000, which was really good in 1981. And yet it didn't make any difference. Retail sales were good in 81, Mr. Forrestal said. Now to be fair, some policymakers in 81 expressed doubts and concerns, but what Mr. Forrestal was talking about was the general consensus among most policymakers. They were relatively sure the economy was holding up really well. And then as you can see, what happened afterwards, not just that it fell into recession, but a deep, protracted, and very painful recession they had no idea was coming, nor did they have any idea it was going to be as bad as it was. But you know who did? Everyone in the marketplace, or at least the general consensus in the marketplace with inverted yield curves showed that the market was expecting bad economic tidings, bad economic circumstances, no matter what the payroll report or retail sales numbers said along the way. So we have a choice here. Do we listen to the payroll numbers, no matter how big they get, plus 517? Do we listen to retail sales, plus 3% nominal in January? Do we look at the ISM hovering around 50? Are we reassured? Like, uh, who was it in 2008? That was um, Lacker in 2008. The ISMs are hovering around 50. The economy appears to be steady. When the market is telling you it is the opposite of steady, even if you can't see it yet in payrolls, and in retail sales or anything else that comes along the way. Because those numbers have a tendency of being good until they're not. I'm Jeff. This is your Dollar University. Thank you very much for joining me. And a huge, as always, massive, sincere thank you to the Eurodollar University research subscribers and all of our Eurodollar University members. So until next time, everyone take care.